It has been a while since I've been this excited about a chapter release, and it's purely because we've had no leaks. I know nothing about this chapter. The only thing I know is that we have some sort of android robot type killer, and that it's called the Tools of Torment. Everything else has been speculation for me, and you know what? I want more of that. Before we get into anything, I want to say how much I've actually enjoyed the run-up to this chapter release, the, the feeling of hype around not knowing it has been so nice so well i want more of this but anyway that's enough preaching from me shall we get into what this chapter what tools of torment is setting up because the ptb has been released i have it loaded up and the first thing i want to say is look how cool this lighting looks look at the neon in the background there it looks so crisp Oh, and if you don't care about like me reading the perks or the powers, if you've already seen this, uh, you can like hover over the timeline of this video. I'll split it into chapters and you can just skip ahead straight to me playing some of the killer gameplay or me playing some of the survivor gameplay. Making it easier for you. Ooh, why does she kind of look like Rihanna? <laughs> Reminds me of the Kaito tweet where he put Rihanna into the game. Oh, yo, she looks fucking awesome the school merchant is a tactical killer able to place drones that detect and debilitate her targets her personal perks game afoot thwack <laughs> and leverage allow her to gain haste from pursuing your obsession or screens from survivors when breaking walls or pallets and reduce survivors heal speed the more times you place them on hooks that's a really interesting set of perks there that sounds cool and i gotta say like she looks amazing she looks insane like, this looks like something weirdly out of, like, Apex or Valorant, and I'm not mad about it. It looks really cool. But let's get into her perks, first of all. So, Thwack. Your prey is terrified by your relentless pursuit. After hooking a survivor, the next breakable wall or pallet you break will make survivors within 32 meters scream and reveal their aura for four seconds. This might be a good thing to pair with something like uh, Starstruck, but then you've got, you've got Awakened Awareness, you know, which, which literally gives you the auras. It might be pretty cool. I don't know. We have leverage. Like in business, you profit most when those around you suffer most. Each time you hook a survivor, gain one token, up to 10. When you hook a survivor, this perk activates. For each token, you reduce the speed at which survivors heal by 5% for 30 seconds. It's kind of crazy because it seems like if you go up to 10 tokens, you will then reduce the speed at which survivors heal by 50% for 30 seconds. I mean, I guess it wouldn't make much of an impact, I guess, at 10 hooks because you you'll probably be bound to have a at least two survivors out by then so interesting though interesting to see what, what will happen with that one and then game of foot first you pick your prey then you pick it apart while you are chasing the obsession this perk activates damaging generators and breaking walls or pallets gives you a five percent haste status for 10 seconds whenever you hit the survivor with the total most time in chase with a basic attack they become the obsession this i think would be a really good perk to pair with hubris because if if you get stunned you have 10 seconds of a haste boost and the survivor you're chasing is insta down i can see that being a really good parent and then onto her power called eyes in the sky the school merchant starts the trial with four drones pressing the power button places a drone which enters active mode after a short boot up period in this mode the drone creates a detection zone around itself within it the killer is undetectable and survivors gain lock on progress the drone reverts to scouting mode when no survivor is detected for a while in scouting mode the drone begins a sweeping scan and if it finds a survivor it will re-enter active mode Survivors can interact with a drone to disable it. If they fail, it enters active mode. If they succeed, it returns to the killer. But the survivor is stuck with a claw trap. A claw trap broadcasts the survivor's location to the killer until its battery dies. If they get too close to a drone, it enters active mode and the claw trap's battery is recharged. The killer can press the ability button to open a radar to see the locations of survivors with claw traps and those in a detection zone. There's also a special effect called lock-on. When full, the survivor is revealed by killer instinct while inside a drone's detection zone and suffers from the exposed status effect until the meter discharges or they are put into the dying state. That sounds insane. This killer is essentially built off aura reading. It, like, <laughs> I saw on Twitter earlier, somebody uh, said they were excited for the PTB, but one thing they didn't want was any more aura reading perks. And we basically got an aura reading killer. <laughs> so, oops. Okay, we are going to play some of the killer, but first of all, before we get into any gameplay, I want to go over and see what the survivor is like. Oh, we have two survivors in this one. We have, I'm going to butcher that. I'm thinking it's uh, Thalata Lyra? Thalata? And then Renato. All right, let's start with... I'm going to say it's Talita. Please do correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. 
She kind of has an Elodie vibe with like the way she's dressed, like straight off the bat. She looks a little bit more summer than Elodie though, to be fair. And I don't know why I'm getting Disney vibes from her face. I don't know. That, I don't know why. I, it reminds me of like a Disney vibe for some reason. Okay, so Talita's perks, we have friendly competition. You revel in the community spirit of a competition and inspire others to follow suit. Whenever you finish repairing a generator with at least one other survivor, this perk activates. You and other survivors who finished repairing the generator with you get 5% increased repair progress speed for 75 seconds. I hate that. Oh, straight off the bat, I hate that. That's just, that's promoting more people on one gen and, and gen rushing again with the gen rushing perks. We had it with Fatorio as well and now we're getting more. Oh, it winds me up. The next one is teamwork, power of two. Uh, it's hard to keep up with you, but it doesn't stop people from trying. Whenever you finish healing another survivor, you both move 5% faster as long as you stay within 12 meters of the survivor you healed or until one of you loses a health state. Uh, it can only trigger once every 140 seconds. That sounds like Blood Pact, uh, which I guess you could pair up with Blood Pact and get even more haste. Again, like this, these perks are really seeming to promote the idea of running in pairs which I think would work really well in the Swift. And then the third one is called Cut Loose. You get in enough trouble, you know how to get out of it. After performing a rushed vault in a chase, this perk activates. While this perk is active, your rushed vaults are silent for up to six seconds and successfully performing a rushed vault during that time resets the timer. This perk is gonna be horrendous on Larry's with something like Lythe. Like you, you rush vault, you get life, you run to another rush vault and you're essentially just bounding over like a horse in a race silently the entire freaking time. That is going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> and then the next survivor I think is pronounced Renato and I think it is Alita's brother. I think. I'm guessing. They have the same last name. I mean, it could be husband and wife. People in relationships, cringe. We have Blood Rush. Your mind and body are honed for great feats, allowing you to push through with extra effort when necessary. This perk activates once you are one hook away from instant death. While healing, running, and suffering from exhaustion, press the active ability button. I'm sorry, I just like immediately, I, I read ahead and oh my lord. Okay, let's get through this. While healing, <laughs> no, <laughs> while healthy, running, and suffering from exhaustion, Press the active ability button to lose a health state and recover from exhaustion instantly and gain the broken status effect for 20 seconds. You are automatically healed from injured to healthy after 20 seconds. Being put into the dying state will cancel the healing effect. I can see this creating a new meta where you have sprint burst and dead hard running side by side. Like people do that now, but this makes it even more viable. I don't know if I like it. His next perk is Teamwork, Collective Stealth. Whenever another survivor finishes healing you, you both leave no scratch marks as long as you stay within 12 minutes of the survivor who healed you or until one of you loses a health state. So the, the both of these survivors are bringing in these, this idea of teamwork perks, which is not something we've seen before, but it seems to be really promoting the idea of sticking together. And then the third perk is Background Player. After you unhook another survivor, breaking to a sprint at 150% of your normal running speed for six seconds and gain exhaustion. This perk cannot be used while suffering from exhaustion. I don't know about those perks. None of those perks interest me personally. I don't see myself running any of them, but they're very interesting because I think they're gonna change the dynamic of the game and, and how survivors run. Or at least if they run them, they will. You know, I don't see many of these becoming meta. Maybe Blood Rush at a push, but... Um... They're interesting either way. So this is really cool as a side note. This is the edit bots function. So as part of the new update, you can actually go into custom lobbies with the survivor bots and actually change what they bring in. So you can get them to bring in toolboxes if you wanted to practice against toolboxes. Uh, you can actually completely change their builds, which is really cool. So if you find yourself wanting to practice against certain builds, you can do that really easily. And also I've included the new two, the two new survivors so we can get a chance of running against them. Also, it doesn't seem like we're getting a map um, from what I can see. There's no map included in this. So I'm just going to go ahead and put on a Mori and we're going to jump in and check out this new killer. All right, cool. She looks so cool. So fucking cool. All right, cool. So we can inspect radar, which is interesting. And we can also deploy a drone. So if I deploy a drone like next to a gen. Yo, you're cool. Okay, so on the radar, I can see nothing. Oh, they've got a gen done. This fucking toxic gen rushes. Oh, this is a new survivor. I'll chase you instead. Hello. Ooh. 
It, it does remind me of pig. I did worry about this if we got a female killer. That would be too close to, to the pig in terms of her animations and stuff. And it does kind of remind me of pig. <laughs> nice grab. Good stuff. All right. Can we put a padrone? Okay, so you can't put a padrone next to the hook. You have to be this far away from the hook to put a padrone. That's quite a distance. It's good, though, because I know a lot of people were complaining about the night being like a camping killer and... Seems like that won't be a problem. That looks really cool. Just watching him do that. That's awesome. All right, they're on this gen, I think. Let's go and get them. What was that? Oh, look. You can see a little white dot on the radar. So that was somebody in the detection zone by the look of it. Yeah, yeah. The new survivor. She's got some sort of weird grid around her. So she must be... Yeah, look. It's got the three dots as well. I'm so sorry. I'm like just not providing good commentary at all here. Okay, actually, I want to go and check. So if I walk towards these dots... Uh, does that mean they're in that direction? Yeah, so they're closer to me now. That's so cool. She gets like a weird like like jolt when she um when she comes out of checking her radar, which okay, that got me stunned apparently. Nice. She feels like strong when she hits. Like she got a big beefy slice. What was that? What did she do then? <laughs> that was really weird. <laughs> I don't understand why that happened. All right. Oh. No, no, no. My drone sees you, you silly sausage. Hey, buddy. I'm still behind you, buddy. There we go. Oh, my God. He's juicing. I know a lot of people were really hoping for the Terminator off the back of this. Oh, there's the other new survivor. Hello. It does not seem like we got anything linked to the Terminator. It's not even like really a robot style killer. It's just more of a futuristic. Uh, Steve, you are, you are sandbagging there, buddy. It's more of like just a futuristic killer. Kind of something I like Blade Runner reminds me of. You know, it's not necessarily futuristic. It's more of like this cobbled together futuristic vibe. You know, not like a sleek futuristic vibe. Oh, God. Oh, Steve, buddy, you're juicing. Let's go. My man Steve's been learning from JRM himself, apparently. Oh, my God. Please, come on now, Aaron. You cannot do... Uh, this isn't going on YouTube. <laughs> oh, I think I saw the other survivor over there. He's the one I want. Yeah, I need you so I can moor you. Come here, little shit. hi -ya! That's some good stuff. I think you're moorable now, right? Yes, you are. Okay, I'm going to take my, my camera off. Let's enjoy the Mori. Oh, bro, that was kind of sensual, though. <laughs> I just know where they are. Look at this. I just know, I know you're on a gen. You're screwed. The Mori's cool. Again, though, like, there is this, like, seduction vibe to her. I can see a lot of people calling her mommy already. Ignore the hit. All right, let's see. I think you're Mori, it. Right? Yeah, let's see the Mori again. Let's see what that's like. Yo, it's, it's so brutal, but again, it's so, so sensual. Like, it's weird. Oh, I think Steve's Insta down now. Hi. Yeah, nice. That's pretty cool, actually. I like that. We'll see the Mori again. So... How long do you think it's going to take people to start calling her mommy? Has it already happened? Probably already happened, doesn't it? All right. Let's see what her hatch closing animation is. Stop it. Oh, she uses a hand. That's cool as fuck. Okay, so I put up a drone while I was walking around just to see if I could get any idea of where she was. And look at that. I know exactly where she is now. Shame I can't get the, the 4K Mori, but... Eh. Look at the way she walks. Look at them hips. Oh, my God. Sheesh. God damn. I, I need a minute. I need a second to recover. Seriously, behavior, you need to start making sexy characters. All right? Like, we get it. The community is horny. You don't need to feed into it as much as you do. That being said, it is nice to have, like, a new mommy character in the mix. Don't judge me, all right? You can agree we have a lot of daddies. We don't have many mommies. 
All right, now it's time to test the survivor. I want to see what it's like going up against the killer. Unfortunately, I have to do this on live servers because they still don't have killer bots. Imagine coming into a PTB as not a new character. It's like the people who come into a PTB and play clown. She's such a cool looking survivor. I can't lie. She's, she's badass as hell. So I didn't run any of the new survivor perks because... Honestly, I just wanted to test out the survivor and I'm more interested in knowing what it's like to go against the killer. So that's more where I am. I want to I want to test this PTB. Hi. Me? OK. <laughs> I right, will people buy them. Nice. Ooh. Oh, nice mind game. What's happening? What are you doing? You're like on top of me. I'm so confused. Help. I. You're just looking at your thing. Okay, so the little eye symbol of there must be telling me that she's looking at me. You can't swing over that. Honestly, you can get distracted just by the way her hips sway while she's chasing you. So I don't feel like that's a fair killer. I feel like she needs to be nerfed. Less sway of the hips, please. Oh, so you can see the drone's detection zone. I don't feel like survivors should be able to see the drone detection zone. I feel like we should be unaware of that. And we should kind of have to rely on, on either seeing it or hearing it maybe. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of too easy in a way. Oh, Lord, she coming. Oh lord, she do be coming. Take her over here. Yes, hello, how are you? Okay, I might have... Yeah, I waited too long on that one. <laughs> I got so cocky. All right, my bad. Ayo. Can I have a tickle, please? Thank you very much. This sound is so cool. Her sound design, that like, almost like an alarm sound, like, um... It, it reminds me of like, you know, when there's something that's gone wrong in in a futuristic society and you have that alarm sound that goes through the city. Kind of sounds like that to me. Oh, you can't hit over that. We went through this, madam. Hello, coming back? Yeah, you're coming back. All right, cool, let's go. No? I want to go and interact with a drone and see what it does. Oh, hello. What? Oh, you have to do a little puzzle. Yo, that's cool. But I have a trap on my arm now. Well, how do I get it off? What are you doing? Right, there we go. No, no. <laughs> Fine. Remove claw trap. Oh, that's really cool. I really like the little puzzle that you have with it. Yeah, sure, that hits me. All right, I'm pre-dropping pilots because my gal is in next week, apparently. Oh, she's going to get me again. Oh, I almost predicted that wrong. I almost actually like bolted again, but I'm glad I didn't. Okay, do I make this? I made this, right? I don't make this. Oh! I don't make that. <laughs> There's no shot. <laughs> Please not me. Please not me. Ah! I'm such an idiot. She went so weird. Like, why did she like go to the right and then she didn't go to? Oh, I'm, I'm baffled. Like, I'm actually baffled. Ah! Oh, GGs. Okay, so immediately there, I saw a potential problem with that killer. She seemed to be using the drones to basically just stand in one spot and essentially just guard two gens. I think this killer will be a really, really effective three gen killer because you can just guard gens. You can literally put drones on three gens that you want to guard. I think she could be a very effective killer in that regard. She can definitely zone survivors really well because as soon as the survivor comes into, into one section, they're screwed. The killer will know exactly where they are. Overall, though, the new killer is really cool. I do think she's going to be a very effective zoning killer. I think that's going to be one of her biggest strengths is that she can just guard one area and keep it really locked down, which won't necessarily be for like camping, maybe slugging, but it's more going to be a case of guarding a set of gens, not letting the survivors anywhere near the gens without getting into chase. That's going to be the biggest 
uh, thing that I can see her power being used from. Just after playing against her once and playing as her once. Obviously, I don't know everything about her yet. I haven't played her a lot, so there's still a lot to learn. But that's just kind of off the cuff what I think would happen. And of course, she has massive mommy energy, which I think is going to be what a lot of people take away from this more than anything else. So there's that. <laughs> The survivors are fine. I, I don't have much to say on the survivors. There's nothing that really stands out to me about them. I think it's cool that there's like a brother-sister dynamic. I think I, I haven't read their lore. I don't know the backstories. I'll look more into that. But I think it is a brother-sister dynamic, which I think is cool. But yeah, overall, seems pretty cool. I can't wait to play more of it. I might try and stream this at some point or I'll just make a couple more videos about it. I got kind of a busy weekend, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do much live streaming of this, but it seems cool. Let me know what you think in the comments, what your thoughts are so far. Do you like it? Do you not? If you've played it, let me know what you think of that as well. And Hopefully we will see more content come from it and see what people can do with the killer and the survivors and, and all that good stuff. In the meantime, leave a like on this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, of course. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Go out there and be the best damn crocs you can be. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I never give it up. I never give it up. You know I'm going to take, take, taking that crown from you.